Good evening. I want to thank you for appearing to the Wendell Elamine James Show. Uh, today's guest, we have my friend uh, Ray Gonzalez. Welcome to the show, Mr. Gonzalez. Glad to have you, my friend. Thank you, baby. And I call you my friend literally. I mean that. You know, Mr. me and Mr. Gonzalez met a couple of months ago, uh, and uh, we became friends right away, you know. And uh, you, uh, you just got out of prison, Mr. Gonzalez. Yes, I did. I yeah. got out uh, 120 days ago. 120 days ago. How much time did you do? I gave exactly 35 years. 35 years. Wow. And you went to prison at the age of what? 20. 20 years old. You did 30. Wow. Okay. That was a long time. That was a long time to be with society. You know. Very long. What, what, was, what was your crime in judgment? My crime was murder, attempted murder, robbery, attempted robbery, great bodily injury, uh, use of a deadly weapon, and a few other charges. Okay. Where, where'd you do your time? I did my time. I started my time in San Quentin in, from 81 to 88, and then I went to Vacaville. New Folsom, uh, Tehachapi, Corcoran, among other places. You did, you did, you did the circuit, huh? Yeah. You went, you went around. Yeah. You did. You went around the block a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so you in, in 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 prison. You uh, you did most of your time in in, in what, what 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 prison? What most Pri of your time? Uh, San Quentin. San Quentin. That's the the longest time I spent in one prison was in San Quentin. In San Quentin. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and um, at what time in your in your prison time did you decide to, to to wake up and start doing things right to get you out of prison? It was twelve years into my term. Uh, I was living in my addiction, still. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on July, the month of July, and uh, I got a one fifteen for making wine, and. During the 115 hearing, uh, a lieutenant, uh, it was it was a unscheduled intervention because it was more of a uh, scolding, and he said some things that really moved me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's when I really started really taking a look at my life and how I've been living it, and. The, the the destruction I've done, the wreckage I left behind, and the victims as well. Mm -hmm. So so in that in that in that hearing, it, it did you a, a, a world of good there. Yes, it yeah. did. It uh, it made me realize that I got I was being I was living a selfish life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't considering about anybody, mm -hmm. not including my family. And my children and victims and people that have been a foundation to me during the twelve years in my uh, term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, coming out of the hearing, you uh, you decide to sort of start attending self help programs. You decide to start doing things that would be beneficial to you getting out of prison and and more or less paying back to society. It started at a, at a very slow, like a snail pace. Because I had to reconstruct my thinking, mm -hmm. but it it wasn't an overnight mm -hmm. transformation. It was a process. It was a process. Okay. So I, I had my first steps were to let go of my addictions, and like I said, that was an overnight deal, uh, an overnight process. But it gradually, I. I got to a prison where I was able to participate in 12-step recovery programs and self-help. Okay. You, um, uh, at, w at, at what point in your life did you begin to educate yourself, go to school? Uh, do, do you have any, any degrees? Do you have any, did you graduate from high school? Or I, I graduated with my class on the streets. Okay. Uh, 
the resources that I utilized w while I was in San Quentin was the vocations. Okay. I, I took uh, vocational plumbing the whole term I was there. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was transferred, I, I acquired my three-year cert there. And when I was transferred, the other institutions didn't have vote plumbing. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to continue and complete my journey, German journeymanship. Okay. okay. So I took other classes that was required by the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, I, 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 you know, when I started doing my time, they, I went to my docket hearing, and uh, docket hearings when you first start doing your time, you got to go to so many hearings, docket hearing before you start going to your suitability exactly. hearings. <coughs> and I went in there and the commission, one commissioner. Said, well, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do this, and I want you to go to NA and AA, and you know, and you know, at that time I, I didn't drink. I don't, I don't drink like alcohol. I didn't drink, you know. So I said, well, I don't need to go to AA. He said, yeah, you need to go to AA, you know. So um, I, I thought about what he what he said. So I, I said, well, this is what I have to do to get out of prison. So I'll do it. So I started going to, to NA and AA. I go in. I sit in the back of the room. And kick with the homies, right. you know, for a while, a couple of years, until it registered that, hey, the man told you that you need to go to NAAA. That's part of your requirement to get out of prison. Mm -hmm. So that's what you got to do. So I b began to sit in these groups, and I began to start listening to some of these people's mm -hmm. testimonies, so to speak, when they talk. And, and then during their testimonies and talk, you know, I started to see in myself in some of their talks, mm -hmm. you know, and it got kind of interesting because, you know, I said, wait a minute, you know, what they're saying, is that, that's me, mm -hmm. you know, so I began to start talking, sharing some of my stories and, and things with them, and, well, more or less, the, 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 the groups got, became, be okay, yeah. you know, I, I look forward to Tuesday nights, going mm -hmm. to NA, you know, going to AA, going to different programs. And uh, it got to the point to where, you know, we became to uh, start running programs ourselves. So wh at what point did you find that you needed to start participating in the programs? Uh, during my first pro hearing, consideration hearing, my initial board hearing, uh, the board had suggested during your, like you said, the doc hearings that I needed to take these 12 step programs. Well, during my first initial board hearing, uh, I went into the, I, w I started the 12 steps and alcoholism and, and, and addictions. And uh, I found at that time, I'm thinking to myself that there's nobody there qualified to run these groups. <laughs> and with that, I took it to the board, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy, the, the commissioner, Commissioner Welsh, he looked at me and said, you need to take a good look at yourself <laughs> and really think about what you're saying. And, you know, I, I, after the hearing, I just went back to the cell, and, and I thought about the whole, the whole hearing. And... So I continued my programs, you know, and I was trying to sort out what he was meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I started the 12-step programs during maybe like a third quarter of the way through the process until my release, I started realizing that I was, among others, the experts in that group mm -hmm. because I was the alcoholic right. who experienced the destruction of many lives as well as my own. So at that, at that, at that, at that time, you started sharing your story with the it, Yes. Uh, at first, I was ashamed to talk about myself, mm -hmm. talk about my background, mm -hmm. my upbringing, you know. But it was a reality. And I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed to speak on the actions behind the closed doors, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, but like you said, uh, everybody's story was similar, very similar. Mm -hmm. So I started sharing a little at a time 
until finally I came out of my shell and I just put everything on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, it was emotional at first, you know, because I thought I was the only one that went through it. But I come to learn that I was among many, many. Yeah, yes. You know. Yeah. Well, well, you know, in, in prison, we we all share similar uh, backgrounds. Yeah. You know, you know, we go into a, into a place like prison. We feel that, you know, that we are, we're alone. You know, nobody have stories like mine. I'm kind of I'm like the Lone Ranger. I, I, I ride alone. Right. But looking at the whole scenario of things, you can see that practically everybody in prison has the same same background. Yeah. You know, we went through so much in life coming up. We we uh, 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 we have a lot in common and sit down in some of these groups, you know, you really can see that, you know, wow, you know, we we got a lot a lot going on. Right. That that that's out of the same cloth. So that gives us time to sit down and discuss and this like like the site the problem that we have, the, the take them apart, and put them back together again. So when we come back to this world, we'll be a better, better product, right. so to speak. So, and you coming home? You've been home. How, how long have you been home? Uh, a little under four months. A little under four months. It, well, actually, the twelfth will be four months. Four months as well. So since since you've been home, what have you done with yourself? Well, uh, when I was released it was required that I go to a, a transitional housing mm -hmm. for six months. <clears throat> During the, the first three months, I attended group, did what was required of me. But during, during the uh, pro hearing, the commissioner stipulated uh, conditions mm -hmm. and a few of the conditions were that I don't hang around addicts, I don't hang around alcoholics, friends, old hangouts, and so on. Uh, when I when I was when I arrived to this transitional housing, uh, that's all that was there. You know. So you 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 went into a, a treatment program, right? Okay. A transitional housing program. Treatment, and but uh, when he made these conditions, I was I was baffled because uh, I was put into a situation. I was put into a position where that's all there was: alcoholics and addicts. But you know, they're trying to change their lives also. Mm -hmm. You know, and. They're in the process of beginning the process of uh, changing their lives. And the programs that they were uh, teaching there is, is I had gone through for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I was very familiar with their, their teachings there. So I was there for three months at this transitional housing and in, in, the, in the process, going through the process, <coughs> which the board required. They wanted me to go through a, a six-month transition before I was released to go to my family's home. Mm -hmm. And part of, part of, uh, during the three months, I was, I was becoming restless. I wanted to get to work because in the process of that transition, they said they want you to stop. Do absolutely nothing. Do nothing. And that was part of my, uh, that was part of my uh, birth of addiction, mm -hmm. idling. And they want, they want, they wanted you to become dependent on them all over again. Yeah. And you just left that. And I just left that. Yeah. So that's something that, that's something that you you trying to get away from. Exactly. So that program that they send you to, you feel that you weren't supposed to be there. Well, I I can understand the transition back mm -hmm. into society, but. Their process of transition, I had already run, went through. You did, you did the NA, you did the AA, you did all the, all the self help programs. You did that. Yes, so I did that. So that's something that you didn't need. Yes. Well, I, I need it. I still need it. I always need AA and NA mm -hmm. because that was 
my foundation of recovery. Okay. However, uh, I had to start working because when I left prison, I worked for 33 years, mm -hmm. you know, and I was conditioned to go to work to, to be useful. You know what I mean? And when I get to the transitional housing, they bring me to a dead stop. So right. I was I was pretty uncomfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, soon after the three months, I was I was I was moved to uh, Treasure Island, mm -hmm. and I started work. I started working. Well, so you have a job now. And I have a job now. Right on. That's good. That's good. That's what you need. So That's life need. is life is starting for me. Let me let me back up just 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 for a minute. I, 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 I'm I'm saying that. I'll take you back to prison. How many times did you appear in front of the board of prison terms? Before I appeared before them four times. Four times before you was found suitable for parole. On the fourth one, I was found suitable. Did the governor take your date any time? No. Okay. You was, so you went through the process of the full board, and then the governor, and then you released. Right. Then you came from Solidad to the transition houses of Walden House. Right. No, it was VSP. VSP. Yeah. Okay. And I want to add that from the from the first of my initial hearing to my release, it was twelve years. Mm -hmm. So it was within uh, each each denial was three years. So from your initial board to my release hearing, it was twelve years. It was twelve years. Okay. But you got you got a three year denial first. All all of them. Three years now, wow, is that right? Okay, yeah. okay. But you made it back to the world. Yeah. You made it back, yeah. right? And you, um, today you're employed, you have employment. Yeah. You're part of this, this world again. Yeah. You know, you reunite, re reunited with your family. Yes. You and your girls doing pretty good. Real good. Well, I tell you this, hey, this this world is, 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 is a beautiful place. Yes, it is. Right? And we want to let the society know that you know you, you did your crime. You know, you know, you were sentenced to the amount of time to do. Mm -hmm. You went in there. You didn't squander your time. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the self help that you needed. You did the, all the program that was required of you. You know, you're remorseful for, for the crime that you committed. Mm -hmm. You know, and today, you will have will be in a, a form of trying to give back to society for the rest of your life. Yes. You know. So we need you to tell society, you know, how you feel about your crime, then how you feel about your crime now. About my crime and being in a state of mind when I first was arrested, first of all, I would like to say that uh, I will never forget the victim and the family. They're, they're always going to be with me. I have, I, I, me, myself, have committed myself to live for them live for, for the per, my victim and their families to be a better person. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first got arrested, I was very selfish. I, I didn't care about anybody. I didn't even care about myself because I was an addict and I was the, the drug that I was abusing was very damaging. And I, I still haven't recuperated from it because it, it I was a PCP addict. And it destroyed a lot of my brain cells, and, and I, could, I could feel it. And, uh, but at the time of my arrest, I was very selfish, self-centered, irresponsible, immature, and today I know that. Mm -hmm. Today, at then, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody else was the one that was having problems. Mm -hmm. And When I committed my crime, I, I was I was in a state of mind where I didn't care about nobody. I didn't I didn't care whoever got my way. You know, it was going to be destruction. But today I look back and it was a very selfish act, very selfish, very greedy. I didn't care about my victims. I didn't care about my family. I didn't care about my children. I didn't care about my spouse. I didn't care about myself. So I, I, I was, I didn't care, you know, uh, very selfish and greedy. And you didn't, you didn't care then, but going through the process of you doing the, your, your change, your, your metamorphosis uh, in prison 
changed from who you were to who you are now, uh, let, let, let's, 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 let's let society know about who you are now. Today, I've acquired all this information through these 12-step recovery programs and others, uh, the information that I never had because I never tried to acquire them while I was in my addiction on the street. Mm -hmm. I had no desire to quit using drugs. But today, after all the information I've acquired through a lot of friends, you know, a lot of mentors that, they were, that I really consider my mentors because they helped me through the process. And uh, all this information I have today through these groups, I know who I am. You know, and I know how I got to where I was in, m in the birth of my addiction, why I got there, and uh, all the way up to the day of my rest. Now I can live a life of understanding why I was thinking the way I was then and the uh, consequences that I have, that mm -hmm. I would have if I make a wrong decision today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, today, I have uh, a desire to stay out and to be among society and try to give back to kids, especially the kids that are, and, and also adults, mm -hmm. but the kids that are really at risk right now. So you want to you wanna, you wanna help the, the, the youth, you want to help the, the youngsters, yeah. you know, not uh, fall in the same hole that you fell in, so to speak. Yeah. Because this, you know, our youngsters today are in trouble. You know, mm -hmm. they really are. You know, I don't know. They had the, they had the the Y generation, the X generation. The, what I don't know what generation this is, mm -hmm. but you know, our youngsters are in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we need people like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and other lifers coming home from prison to come home and give the the youngsters something that they have never had before, right. and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they don't get the truth. They, they, they're told lies are all doing their lives. Mm -hmm. But we and go into the system and become conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, we come back to society, we want to tell the youngsters something that they never heard before, and that's the truth. Right. So this is something that you, you want to do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They need to be informed. They need to be informed. You know, they need to be informed. They need to, they need to be given the information on their life, mm -hmm. on where the direction they're going, and how they got there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, like I said, we, this is something that we, we, we need to do coming home from prison. We need to come home and, and, and wake up the young, the youth, you know, to, uh, to show them that it's a better way of, of living than what they've been tricked into li in living. You know, you know, a lot of youngsters, they, they want to fit in somewhere where they don't. Mm -hmm. They want to be part of something where they're not. Mm -hmm. And it, it's all about peer pressure. They want to be something that they, they have no knowledge of. And it's a shame that, you know, people in prison, youngsters look up to us in prison. Yeah. You know, the, the OGs, the, the triple OGs, the quadruple OGs, mm -hmm. they look up to us. They want to be, you know, be like the, 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 the OG in prison, and that doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, that's another story within itself. But we want to come home, we want to give the youngsters something that they've never had before, and that's the truth. Yeah. So, you know, we... Um, we are the ones, man, and we want to tell society that, uh, you know, we we committed a crime, the crime that we committed, you know, we, we, we know what we did. You know, we, we just like the child. The child was raised by his mother and the father, and they go in the kitchen, and the mother tells them, that don't touch that stove because it's hot. And the, the child becomes curious, why don't they want me to touch the stove? And pretty soon that child touches the stove, and he find out why. You know, we're like that child. We went into the system because our mother and father told us all our life, if you do wrong, wrong going to happen to you. And don't do that, or whatever. And we wanted to be curious, and we committed whatever crime we committed because we didn't listen to what our parents told us to do. So it was like that stove. We touched the stove, and that's something that we'll never do again, is commit another heinous crime that's going to take us into a system where we don't have the right to even think for ourselves. We have a right to make choices. But we don't have a right to think about ourselves because they think for us and they make decisions for us. They feed us, they clothe us, they wash our clothes. They do everything that we're supposed to do for ourselves, they do it inside. So now we're back into society and we want people in society to know that we committed a crime. You know, we're remorseful for it. We really are. 
we're back in society. The Board of Prison Terms found us suitable for parole to allow us to come back into this world. So now we're back and we want to be part of this world. We want to be husbands. We want to be fathers. We want to be uncles. We want to be siblings. We want to be sons to our mothers and our fathers. We want to be part of the society. So we want to tell our neighbors that we're here. We want to be part of this. Allow us to become part of the society. Mm. Well, that's real simple. You know, that's what we want to be. Mm. You know, so let society know who you are. Let them know what you, what you want to do for the rest of your life, uh, uh, Ray. Mm. You know, you got goals in your life. What are your goals for the rest of your life in society? Well, first of all, uh, my goal as of today is to get to my folks' house. Uh, my dad, he's up in age, and uh, he's becoming sick. And uh, my mom, they both worked for General Motors for 30 years. And uh, my mom, she's, she's up in age also and, and has... Uh, mobility difficulties. So she needs help with my dad also. And I'm the only sibling. Uh, I need to be over there. And that's one of the things I really uh, express to my parole officers. That, you know, I, I want, as soon as these six months are up, that is required from the board, that I want to go over there. I don't want to wait a month and a half I don't want to wait two months. I don't want to wait a week. As soon as my six months are up, I would like to go to my mom's house to assist her in taking care of my dad. That's my first goal. And my second goal is to bond with my family, to establish a bond that, that all families should have mm -hmm. with their family members. Uh, having Christmas with them, mm -hmm. you know, spending all birthdays, all these little things that mean so much, you know. And uh, I would like to get a, a, a simple job, you know, that, that will support myself and my, my fiancé. And uh, just go through life slow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, live a simple life. Live a life. Simple yeah, life. real great. simple. I don't want, I don't need extravagant materialistic things. I just want... A simple life. That's great. Well, we want to thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, for being here today. We really appreciate you coming in today. Uh, you made it back, man. Welcome home. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome home. You made it back. You too. You know, we want to wish you the very best in life. We want to give uh, 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 a shout out to you and your family for this Christmas. Thank your you. Your first Christmas in 34 years, a long time, man. Yeah. A long time. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. This year, we you wish too. you and your family. Likewise. And um, we want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I want to make tell the audience that we have a, a program error on my part. The guest is not Jackie White. We got Ray Gonzalez. So on the heading, you see see Jackie White, uh, but it's Ray Gonzalez. So I want to make that error on my part. Let the audience know that. This is Ray Gonzalez, not Jackie White. So we want to thank this this guest for being on this evening. We want to thank the audience for viewing this this evening. And next Saturday at 7 o'clock, the Wendell Elamine Show will be aired at the same time. And we welcome you to come back next week and take a, another look at our show. Thank you and have a, a blessed evening.